every single organization is a vehicle and it needs different parts in order for it to run. One, one, obviously, the school, the education is a huge part of the community and it gives me great pleasure to ask Rabbi Spitzer, who is the head of the Ferris Schleimer Golders Green, to address us today. Um, first of all, I'm not a rabbi and I can't speak from a rabbinical perspective either. Um, Levi contacted me last night and asked me if I'd like to come and say a few words in my capacity as a head teacher. I want to make it clear I'm not an activist, I'm not a diplomat, which might become quite obvious. I'm a head teacher and I feel passionately about Haredi education in general and it's no secret to most people in this room at least that we are at the moment in a bit of a crisis in, when it comes to Haredi education and I just felt I want to share my thoughts. Obviously this is more relevant to some people in the room than others. We have some representatives from the Department of Education I understand and from the Department of Communities and Local Government. I've had the pleasure to sit next to Lord Bourne, lovely individual and I welcome any questions. I don't have much time. I've been told that I'm, a, I'm on a very strict time scale, but I'll stick around and if you want to discuss it with me further, I'll be more than happy to do it. So, I'm Eli Spitzer. I'm the head teacher of a school in Northwest London, a Haredi school, a boys school, um, an all through independent school. So from early years all the way up to Q stage four. And previously I've worked in, as a head teacher of a school in Stanford Hill. And I'm also a graduate of Stanford Hill Haredi schools myself, and I grew up in this community. Um, just to put it into context, the Institute for Jewish Policy Research have published a report a couple of weeks ago um, where out of 34,000 children in Jewish schools at the moment, almost 20,000 are in Haredi schools. And that number is growing and growing rapidly. So, I think the perception may sometimes be that the ultra-Orthodox community is sort of on the margins of mainstream Jewry and therefore not necessarily a major concern. But if you look at the numbers, we already constitute over 60% of Jewish children in Jewish schools and that number is growing. So we must certainly address this issue and see how we move forward. Now, the first question any outsider would probably ask is why do people in the Stanford Hill community choose to send their children to private schools? And let me assure you that this is not because members of the community have got money to spare and they want to send their children to an Eton and Harrow type of school. <coughs> Many families here in the local community actually live on the bread line and yet they choose to send their children to a local independent private school and they actually have to pay school fees as well, which is not easy which demonstrates that the Haredi community and Haredi families and Haredi parents are determined to provide their children with a Haredi education. And they are convinced that this particular type of education is simply not available anywhere. Now, as any community, we are not perfect. There are always flaws. I'm very proud of my community. And I think when I look at the alternatives, I think my community, for me at least, is the best possible choice, and I send my own children to independent Haredi schools. In recent years, as a head teacher, I felt that whilst Ofsted, the office whose job it is to be a driving force for improvement, has unfortunately broken down the trust between parents and Ofsted and the Department of Education. Now, this all comes down to the issues around. LGBT and the promotion of protected characteristics. I don't want to become too technical and many people, most people, if not everyone in this room is already familiar with it, but there's one point that I want to use this platform to make and I think it's a very important point. When people think of the Haredi community and their position on LGBT issues, the first thing they will think is that, well, this is of course all to do with a biblical position on LGBT issues and therefore Haredi schools will refuse to, pr to respect and to tolerate members of the LGBT community. That is simply false, and I will prove it to you. The biblical position on homosexuality is exactly the same as the biblical position on tattoos. They're both, according to the Bible, an abomination. And yet, I can stand up in my school in assembly and say to all of the children in the school that whilst as practicing Jews, we are not allowed to have a tattoo, 
you need to respect everyone's right if they choose to have a tattoo and you need to tolerate them. And yet we can't stand up and say the same things about members of the transgender community or gay people simply because one of the fundamental values of the Haredi community is not to sexualize children and to protect their innocence for as long as possible and certainly beyond the compulsory school age. Now, you can read more about it. Professor Samuel Heilman is a leading expert who has written about the Haredi community if you want to understand how this culture has developed. And now is not the time for it. But it's important to understand that this is the Haredi culture. We go as far as censoring our own religious texts, our own Bible, the Talmud, when it comes to children, where we will not discuss any explicit sexual matters. And that has led to this dead end where at the moment the Department for Education and Ofsted refuse to accept that this is not something that we can negotiate on. As a head teacher, it's not up to me or to my governors to change this policy. If I choose to deliver an assembly where I will discuss sexual matters explicitly, one of two things will happen. Parents will either withdraw their children from the school or I will be sacked with my board of governors. That's the only thing that will come out of this. So, the Department of Education and Ofsted have got a very, very important role to play in schools across the country. And in fact, as a head teacher, I can tell you that I genuinely believe that Ofsted can and should be a force for good in schools. It is a very important incentive for head teachers to be able to work towards an improved grade. If you're inadequate, you want to be RI. If you're RI, you want to be good. And of course, once you're good, you want to maintain that and maybe even go for outstanding. When we are told that right now, regardless of what you will do in areas of health and safety, safeguarding, teaching and learning, outcomes for pupils, whatever happens, you will continue to be inadequate or requires improvement because of the views of parents, not because of a choice the school has made. What happens is that schools lose faith in the authorities to drive improvement for schools, which is what they are supposed to do, which is why they exist. And what also happens is that it actually makes my job very difficult. How can I attract qualified teachers to come and work in my school if they know that on their CV all they'll ever be able to do is show that I've worked in an inadequate school? Regardless of our resources, regardless of our facilities and how serious we are about education, most qualified teachers or middle leaders will simply not want to come and work in an inadequate or even a requires improvement school, especially when I can't convince them in a recruitment process and say, don't worry, we're about to solve this. I urge anyone in this room, regardless of whether you work directly for the Department of Education or in the Department of Communities and Local Government, I think if you genuinely believe in advancing the interest of children, this is what this is all about. This is not about staff, it is not about parents, it is about the children in these schools, then we have to come together and find a solution and find a way out of this. This has been going on for far too long. I've had the first time my school, a school where I worked, has failed an inspection around this issue. It goes back to 2013. Five years later, and we haven't made any progress. Thousands and thousands of children continue to attend inadequate schools. And the, the, the reality is also that if Ofsted or the Department of Education pursue this policy, what will happen is that schools will be driven underground or parents will choose to homeschool their children. I think we should stop sacrificing the best interests of our children on the altar of muscular liberalism. I think it's time for us to think of the best interests of children, not about the agenda of Humanists UK or the National Secular Society. It's not about them. They've got a budget of £2 million a year dedicated to tackling faith schools. Their problem is not whether we teach LGBT issues. Their problem is 5,000 faith schools in the country. We are an easy target, and that's why they dedicate so many resources to tackling our schools. I sincerely hope that people in this room, even if it's not your job, but if you can exercise your influence in the corridors of power to try a way out of this, the children in our schools will be deeply grateful. Thank you.